Hey, good morning, folks. Uh, this is going to be a really great, entertaining event here today. Matter of fact, this is half as good as the ride down here was yesterday with these retired engineers. This is going to be something that nobody will ever forget. Uh, these guys uh, are, just lived a charmed life. They were at General Motors and Chevrolet when times were really uh, at, its, at their peak. And my only response to them was, in my next life, I want to come back as one of you. Talking about LT5 engines, and uh, I, I went back and reread what I had said in Chapter 12 about the LT5 so that I didn't repeat myself too much. And uh, yeah, I've got some other stories that are going to be interesting, and I think you'll enjoy uh, hearing the inside stories. Uh, hi, I'm Al Grenning. I'm going to be presenting some information today on the uh, Mark IV program, uh, particularly from the time the Mark IV engine was being addressed with the Corvette platform. We have information, uh, build orders and test orders and work orders for the development of the service program, which is one of the predecessors for the later L88 program, and we're going to track a particular engine, an engine that was developed by the AAA Engineering Center um, for competition at the Sebring Race in March of 1965. We're very fortunate that we have the documentation and the engine and the history and the story of what happened with that uh, particular piece. And then we'll be speaking about some general things for the development of the L88 in 1966 and other gems. My name is Tom Langdon. I worked on the big block at Chevrolet Engineering starting in 1963, uh, originally as a technician, and then later on as a test engineer, and from there as a design release engineer on a wide variety of engines. The first job I had at Chevrolet Engineering was as a dyno tech working on the Corvair. I'm Danny Davis. I uh, started with GM at GMI in 1949, graduated in 53. I had the good fortune of being able to work on different things like some of the early V8 stuff after basics were done and then went on to work with the Corvair engine and developing in that. Finally ended up luckily in Zorakis Duntoff's high performance area where I was responsible for my dynamometer development stuff. Went through that, eventually uh, became a supervisor of basic V8 engine and then my last job was uh, laboratory development of the 60 degree V6 engine. And, Came out enough, nice enough I could retire in 1987. Bill Howell, I'm a long retired uh, development engineer for Chevrolet Engineering. I spent my career in Warren and I did all the uh, Mark IV big block uh, high performance development back in the 60s. That was my, uh, my primary job. This is really who's bringing us together here today. If it wasn't for this man, none of us would be here talking about anything today. He was an experienced race car builder and driver long before he ever came to America and got to show away. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Gary Klein. I uh, was involved with, involved with the LT5 project, uh, Merck Cruiser in Oklahoma. I was project engineering manager for that engine for the uh, ZR1 Corvette from uh, 1986 to uh, 1995. Uh, I was a Chevrolet engineer and uh, worked for uh, Zora Duntov from 64 through uh, 75 and then continued on for many years until 95 when I retired and then I went back racing uh, GM racing group uh, following the uh, LS2 through LS6 World Challenge Corvette cars. Well I got out of the Army in 57 and came back to work at GM, uh, Chevrolet Research under Ma Maurice Ollie. I say I had uh, uh, Chevrolet clutches from 1960 through 64 and this uh, was all the car lines and the Corvette, so I continued with the Corvette clutch right through uh, to the 95s and so forth. 